Hello, I am Panos Kotathanasis and this is Bad Accent Video Reviews. Today we're going to talk about another anime, Shangri-La Frontier, by, directed by Toshiyuki Kubuka and uh, animated by C2C. Uh, Shangri-La Frontier started as a Japanese web novel series written by Katarina. Then it became a manga, and this year we saw the anime, as I mentioned, by C2C. The, the series is streaming in Crunchyroll at the moment, and uh, I think it ended uh, at the end of March. Uh, so uh, the main theme of the series is full dive uh, VR games, which I guess gamers know what we're talking about. It's a kind of game that you, your whole persona essentially enters a VR world where it exists there playing a game that is very similar to an actual life, apart from the magic and sword and whatever you can find there. Uh, the protagonist, is named Rakuro, is a young man who is obsessed with video games, but not any video games, not the usual video games. He enjoys very much playing trash games, like uh, game video games that are full, full with bugs that everybody hates and they have flopped uh, in terms of... Uh, commercial value, but he's obsessed with all with this and actually he has a number of friends that they also indulge in those kind of games. As the series begins, he has just cleared the oversized uh, Fire Act Chronicle Online, which is a true trust game as we see from the initial uh, frames in the series. And uh, he's suffering a sort of burnout syndrome after playing too many bad video games. At the, at the suggestion of the owner of his favorite game store, Rock Roll, he buys the best-selling and uh, excellent Sangri La Frontier, which is considered one of the best games of all time. And uh, Sangri La Frontier is a full-dive VR game with 30 million registered players. He enters the world of uh, SLF, as the gamers call it, uh, with the name Sanraku, where all the skills he has attained as an expert trust game hunter will come in handy as he progresses in the game, which is, is one of the uniqueness of the particular game that you can use your skills and not just the potential you gain, you, you gain through playing the game. Uh, sticking with his preferred playstyle, Rakuro creates a wanderer character with twin blades, extra luck bonuses and minimum armor except for swimming shorts and a bird head mask, which is also light blue and red in your face design, which is what makes him stand out essentially, although he's, uh, what he wanted to do is exactly the opposite. So yeah, you, you see a guy dressed like that, moving around the game, the reactions of the other players are shocking essentially. And uh, yeah, perhaps uh, this will remind you of, uh, you of a similar character in Demon Slayer, which I'm sure anyone who watches anime will know who I'm talking about. Uh, choosing to skip the game introduction, uh, Rakuro begins fighting monsters while heading to the starting town, Firstia. It's, yeah, the, the names of the towns here have names like that, Firstia, Secondaria, and uh, Third something, they are all like that. But uh, on his way, he encounters Likagon the Night Slayer, a completely unique monster, which is so high level, not one of the game's 30 million players has ever defeated it. And forced to return to his swim shorts, because in the meantime he has gained some armor, and with the curse on his whole body that makes him even more absurd looking, uh, Rakuro suddenly encounters a unique scenario, an invitation to the rabbit city Rabituza, which he accepts, unaware that the recommended skill level is 80, while he's still not over 10, if I remember correctly. Inside this scenario, he is congratulated by a white rabbit named Emul for embodying the spirit of the Volpara rabbit, with Emul becoming his constant uh, accompaniment in the rest of the game. Uh, another set of uh, adventures begins. He has to fight a mad monster and uh, a number of other supernatural beings in order to gain more levels and become better, while the curse that he has gained from Rikagon prevents him from donning armor and also brings his stats down as long as he carries it. At the same time, 
one of his well, maybe arts arts villains, we, arc villains we can say from the previous trust games he was playing. A girl who plays under the character Arthur Pencilgon also appears in the story. She is part of uh, a group, a group, a clan of, as they call it in the games, of player killers. But uh, eventually, although they start as enemies, eventually he, eventually she, she takes Rakuro and another tra former trash game player named Kazo, in order to defeat another special, another special character. The three of them. Uh, at the same time, there is a girl who is in actual life named Ray, who is in love with the protagonist and tries to follow him in the game, although she already has an ultra-powerful character called Siger Zero. And uh, their interactions are quite funny since the girl is very, very happy as she searches for him and eventually finds him, although he does not understand who she is. They are actually classmates, so they know each other in real life, but uh, our protagonist uh, essentially ignores her, her existence. Okay, as we know, as I have mentioned a number of times, uh, this isekai style of anime is probably the most prevalent now, taking uh, uh, taking the throne, let's say, from the Sonnen anime. Okay, this, they also have Sonnen, Sonnen elements, but essentially they are video games, RPGs, that they are transferred into anime, which seems to accomplish uh, the goal of the companies and the creators of this series of having the people who like video games and the manga and anime follow them completely, which is, I guess, a very smart idea to do and probably what gives this style of uh, anime their popularity now. I think there are tons now. Every, every week there is a new one. Uh, so in, oh, in that regard, it is interesting to see how does uh, Sangrila Frontier stands out. For starters, the initial concept of having a player who loves trash games is as funny as it is realistic, actually, with him playing a game called Burp, which is actually for, uh, from Berserk, if you remember the anime, which was, if I remember correctly, there was a video game uh, that spawned from the series and it was quite bad, and maybe this is a joke that Easter egg, as we say. And he actually, throughout the game, he continues to play this dual game uh, where all the players try to discover new bugs and exploit them in their, duel with, in their duels with other players. It is really fun to watch, but it's also playing with the fact that some games are really bad and have a lot of bugs. At the same time, the series takes a closer look at how the whole uh, video game world works nowadays, particularly the... Those uh, MMORPGs where the people who play them essentially emerge in them and kind of live their actual life for them. It becomes their actual life. But uh, it is not uh, the approach the creators have here is not negative. They just present it as part of what life is nowadays. And uh, the series really goes inside the whole concept of these video games, how the characters are formed how the players give them names and uh, shape their personality according to their own or according to what they want to have. Like there are some who are actually male but are presented as female in the game and vice versa. And you have a lot of personality changes from real life to what the game is. And apart from that, there are also forums where the people who play it read to learn more about the game. Uh, there is also the concept of finding the bugs and exploiting them is also there. And also how to move beyond the bugs and some more video game specifics like the concept of NPCs, characters who play a part in the game but uh, are controlled by the AI of the game and not the, uh, the players themselves. Uh, the PKs, which are the players who kill other players, which is usually... It's not exactly forbidden, but usually comes with some sort of penalties in these MMORPGs. It also it deals with the unique scenarios and the unique items, weapons, where some gamers gain these specific artifacts and become uh, 
the target of scorn from the others for having these great items. Okay, it's a whole thing. If you play games, you know what I mean. Um, the story goes a bit outside of the game, in, probably in order to show that the people who indulge in these things are not exactly widows. They may have a, a normal life, and the protagonist does so. Although, as his whole family, he has a sister and two parents, and his whole family at some point admit that they are all widows in a way. His father has an obsession with fishing or something like that. And uh, they're all a bit strange, which is also a comment about the negative comments that we hear very frequently about the gamers that are obsessed with their video game life. Essentially stating that we are all weird and it is okay to be weird that way. I'm not sure how realistic it is, but that is the point that the anime does. Uh, it doesn't go too much outside of the game, however, the most of the series takes place within and as usual in this kind of uh, anime, there is a combination of action and humor and uh, a bit of romance. The last part here is very much toned down and the focus is definitely on the action and the comedy. Uh, again, as usual, the comedy is somewhat pedantic, it's not very intricate let's say and uh, it seems that the whole thing essentially targets teenagers not older older audience for the most part i found myself uh, a bit bored to tell you the truth after a point although some of the some of the battles definitely compensate in that regard the visuals start as very bright colorful and shiny which also becomes tired tiring after a point, but as the series progresses, uh, we have the technical aspect of uh, the anime get much better. Particularly the the four or five episode arc with uh, Weathermon is truly impressive to watch. You will definitely, uh, whoever sees the red flowers background will definitely remember them. And the design of Weathermon and the animation in that fight is truly impressive. Uh, the same applies to the crystal monsters that appear a bit later. And the enemies that uh, our protagonists fight later on. Ayumi Kurashima's character design follows generic lines, let's say, but uh, it is the detail is on a high level and uh, there are many characters and they stand out for each other, which I guess means that her work is pretty good. Okay, the main character definitely stands out with uh, the bad head that he always posters with uh, the creators of uh, the anime playing with the concept repeatedly by having him having to eat in a different way because he's wearing a mask and stuff like that. Uh, which is, regarding the comedy, this is probably the most interesting and uh, the most interesting part of the comedy that appearing here, a sort of self-deprecation, let's say. Uh, the animation by C2C is on a relatively high level and as I mentioned, it gets better as the anime progressive. Uh, the fights are impressive, they are prolonged, they, one could say that they almost they seem realistic in video in video term, in video game terms. But as I mentioned before, there is nothing exactly bad about, uh, about the series, but there is also nothing particularly special. And in the end, what we get from, from the series, from Sangrida Frontier is just an, another isekai. But perhaps it's a bit better than the average, but not, to a level that definitely makes it stand out. We have uh, some other titles that definitely do that. Uh, okay, I don't need to, to mention them. You probably know what I'm talking about. Uh, apart from that, though, in particular, if someone has not seen many Isekai titles, uh, Sangri La Frontier is a good place to start, I guess. And the whole series is definitely entertaining. Fans of video games, RPGs, and whatnot, they will definitely enjoy that. So, if you want to see it, you can uh, subscribe in Crunchyroll and check the whole thing there. Uh, that's it for today. This was the review of Sangri La Frontier. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like these videos, please uh, like and subscribe, and we'll see you again soon. Have a nice day. Bye.